here's that card. Uh, this is a great idea. You should do this. Every time anybody does anything that's remotely in the right direction of where you want them to go, right? You know, it's called um, uh, the um, positive reinforcement, right? It's Pavlovian thing, right? So what happens is you every time they do anything, and I'm not as good at this as I used to. I used to be unbelievable at this, at sending notes. And I remember that, George and Dennis, and I used to do this constantly, send notes to everybody. Um, it's just been more challenging now. But the fact is, here's, a, here's the, the, it's a picture of the ring. And the number is, if you want to order them, 1-800-780-7800. So 1-800-780-9009. And there's also a website. I guess you could probably order them online, I'd imagine, right? www.homestead, homestead, just the way it sounds, homestead.com order cards. It's got the slash order cards. Okay, that's www.homestead.com slash order cards. Okay, I don't know what these cost. Anybody know what these cost? Ten cents a piece. If you order bulk, is it less? Huh? At least thirty dollars worth. So, anyways, I'll leave that up there. If you didn't get that, you can get that after. Just don't take it, please, because that's our copy. Uh, I got the num the final numbers. Actually, I didn't make three four. I made three hundred twenty one thousand four eighteen. I'm sorry, I didn't quite. And. Uh, a premium was two million three hundred twenty-one thousand four seventy-six. Uh, recruits was twelve hundred forty-seven. Securities was thirteen million two hundred fifty-three thousand nine twenty-eight. And loans was thirty-two million seven hundred fifty-one thousand four hundred one dollars in loans we did last month. So uh, something to aspire to. Uh, I, what I'm going to talk about is real quickly. I'm not going to take very very long to do this, but I wanted to make sure. Um, a lot of people that I see in the business, you really have complicated your business way too much. And most of you uh, are do, you have so many moving parts that it's really hard to get people to do the business. Why you have a challenge is getting people to do the business and to get them to, to grow and all that is because there's too many moving parts in your business and the way you go about it. What you have to do to, to uh, get people to go, this is what you want, this is the, the um, effect you want to, uh, to have on people. You want them to, to say, wow, that's it? That's all I have to do? I can see myself doing that. That's simple. See, if you're not getting that response from your people, whatever it is you're doing is wrong because you will not duplicate and you not, will not leverage if people are looking at what you're doing and going, Wow, you're unbelievable. I could never remember all that information. My goodness. If that's what they're getting from you because you're too smart, you're toast in our business, okay? You want to have people say, wow, that's it? That's all I've got to do? Yeah, that's it. That's it. There's nothing more to it than that, right? Because, you, because what that does is it elicits belief, right, that they can do it. We've got to get people thinking, I, I can do this. I could, see, I could see myself doing this, okay? So our business is, this is our business right here. This is how it starts. What do you think is the most important thing about the business? Trust, parenting. Okay, no, it's none of those things. It's the most important thing. That's the most important thing about our business, appointments. No appointments equals no recruits, equals no sales, equals no cash flow, equals out of business, right? Lots of appointments equals lots of recruits, equals lots of sales, equals lots of income, right? Everything about your business is the appointment. No, it's the most important thing in your business is appointments. Nothing is even remotely close to as important as your appointments you have. You with me? And so if that is true, that's what you should be focusing on totally. So if I recruit Daniel Alonzo, right? If I recruit Daniel, the very first thing I'm going to do with Daniel, okay? This is what I used to do, okay? The very first thing I'm going to do with him, once he says, yeah, I'm in, I want to do this, I'm ready to go, right, is I'm going to sit down with him, and I'm going to teach him 
exactly word for word with no, with no deviation whatsoever how to set up an effective appointment because nothing is more important than me teaching him how to set up appointments because if he has any credibility whatsoever, right, and he knows exactly what to say, he has a somewhat decent warm market and he feels comfortable and confident that he can do it, right? Because he's clear, there's no ambiguity, which, which means there's no fear, right? Fear's minimal. He knows exactly what to say. I, and I prepare for every contingency, right? Then he is most likely going to be able to set up 5, 10, 15 appointments for me immediately. If I do not do that, then I may, he may or may not set up some appointments. It depends on how much guts he has, right? Most likely, if he's normal, he doesn't have a lot of guts, which means we're not going to have a lot of appointments. Am I, am I being clear here? See, nothing that you do with a new recruit is more important than teaching them exactly how to set up appointments in their warm market. Nothing. It's the most important thing, okay? So if I, if I recruit him, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to say, look, we need to sit down. I want to show you how to set up appointments. And then I'm going to go through the appointment setting process. And this is how I would set up an appointment. If he's calling his warm market and he calls George, right? This is what I would do. I say, you call up George. This is what I want you to say. I want you to say, hi, George. This is, this is, uh, you know, this is Daniel. How you doing? Great. How's Liz? How are the kids? Blah, blah, blah. Chit chat for about a minute. And then you say, hey, George, the reason I'm calling you is I'm about to get involved in a new business. I'm really excited about it. In fact, George, I'm thinking about possibly making a career change. But before I take such a drastic move, make a drastic move like that, I'm going, I want to get some opinions from people that I really respect like you and Liz. Would you help me out and take a look at this? Would you do that for me? And George is going to say what? No. He's not going to say no. If, he's got to, if it's his friend, he's going to say, yeah, sure, absolutely. Right? If, if George says, listen, I don't, I'm not really interested in buying anything, then you teach him to say, that's fantastic. If you see something you like and you want to get involved in it, that would be fine. If you don't, no problem. What I want is your opinion. Before I make that commitment, I want to get some people's opinion that I really respect like you. Would you take a look at it for me and give me your opinion? Ask again. And he says, yeah, absolutely. No problem. Okay. When can we get together? I got my, my trainer is, is available Wednesday and Thursday. Which one of those days is better for you? He says, Thursday. Fantastic. Is six or eight better for you? Well, six. All right. Fabulous. And, and make sure Liz is there. Okay. We'll be there at six o'clock. I look forward to seeing you. I think you're going to be really excited about your seat. At a minimum, if you see, if you like what we, who, what we do and what it is, maybe you'll feel comfortable to give me a referral or two. Would you think about that? Fantastic. Look forward to seeing you then. That's it. Okay, now what I would do now is I would, okay, now you say it. And how is it going to come out? Nothing like that. Nothing even remotely close to that. Okay, it's going to be so discombobulated, it's going to be comical. And then you hear him do it. And then you go, okay, let me go over it again. And then you go over it again. You ought to script it out, okay? And then you go over it again. And then again, and you have him do it. And then you do it. And then he does it. And then you do it. How long is this going to take? Depends. Could take a half hour. Could take 15 minutes. Could take an hour. I don't care how long it takes. Because if it takes me an hour, and now he's capable of setting 10 appointments, and we go on 10 appointments in a warm market where he has credibility, how many out of 10 am I going to close? Seven at a minimum, right? If I close seven and I recruit two, how, val how valuable was that one hour that I invested in doing that? Oh, my God. Not only that, now he knows how to do it, and he can now teach that to somebody else, right? Which is even better because if he can teach it now, right, if he has it down so well that he can now teach it, he knows what to do when he gets a new recruit, right? He sits down with them, and he teaches them word for word how to do that. You know what? How many of you have actually done this consistently? Probably none of you. Probably none of you. 
And that's to those of you that have problems with, see, I never had problems with people setting up appointments, ever. Never had problems. I had too many appointments was my problem. Not that we had problems setting up appointments, okay? But why was that? Because they knew exactly what to say. And people, the only reason people don't set up appointments is one, they still don't believe what it is that you do is that good. Two, is they don't know what to say. That's why. End of story. No other reason. Okay? So you've got to do that. So appointments. Now, see, this seems rudimentary, right? What did I just do right now? Essentially, I role-played what you do, right? Right? Okay? See, that's what you have to do every time. You have role played. Some of you are going, oh, I know how to do that, but you ain't doing it. Okay, the second most important thing is a closing Once you have an appointment, the most important thing to teach a new person is a closing presentation. A closing presentation, not an informational presentation, a closing presentation. What does that mean? Okay, this is what this means. I'm just going to point out, so I'm not going to go through a little bit, I'm going to show you some things that, see, if, if I was on an appointment, if I was taking, sitting down with somebody, and I'm doing this two or three times today with new people, all right? Well, not some of them are new, some of them are around a while, okay? And I'm actually going to do this to the, my, like, you know, Martin Flores who's leaving the room right now and some other people, okay? Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, so, okay. You go through all the information, right? This is all city group. You talk about all this stuff, right? See, one of the things I'd be doing that I don't think people do enough on, when, we, when you get to the primary city group is what you should be telling people and say, listen, Mike, city group is the largest company in terms of assets on the planet Earth. There is not a company that's bigger and more successful in the financial services arena than city group. That's a company that we represent. We represent their products. We go through all that stuff. Now, this is it. See, if you don't see some, um, uh, I had somebody, somebody went on an appointment with Dak the other, the other day because I couldn't get up there. So one of uh, uh, Debbie Trujillo's people went up there and she did a really good job. She was very personal, he said, but he was, heck, dad, she didn't ask one closing question. Not one. She just went over the information and didn't ask commitment or close on anything. Because of course, you know, I'm teaching them that close, 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 close every chance you get close. You should be asking closing commitment questions every second, every throughout the whole damn thing. At the end, you want to just go, okay, what do we, you know, go, let's go ahead, right? So this is a question and you need to ask the question. You say, you say, you know, Brian, would you feel comfortable doing business with or working with a company like Primerica and Citigroup? Would you have any challenge doing business with a company of the magnitude of our company? Okay, fantastic. You know what? You know how many people don't do that? You watch, when you sit down with them, have them do their presentation, you'll see it. They're not doing it, or they rush through it. You've got to look them straight in the eye, and you just say, look, would you have any problem doing business with or getting involved with a company like Prime American City Group? Would you have any challenge with that whatsoever? Do you have any reservations about that after what you've just seen? See how I did that, right? I'm looking at them. I'm, like, making them answer me. I'm not, like, I, you got to teach them to do that, right? Because we don't want later that coming up. Well, I'm not sure about your company. That ain't coming up, no way, no how, after that, okay? It's not. And if you don't teach them, if you assume they're just going to get that and you don't teach them to do that, they're not going to do it, and they're going to have challenges. They're going to get to the end, and they're going to get, I want to think about it, right? I want to check you out. What do you mean check me out? You already, we already told me that you wouldn't have any problem with it. There's no checking out, right? And then you go through the whole thing, the debt, right? And that right here, do you have a written pro? You go over the debt. You ask them this question. Do you have a plan to get out of debt and financially secure? And then the next uh, thing is, well, I don't know where I have that problem, blah, blah, blah. You ask that question. You got to close, right? You got to teach your people to really close on this stuff. And so when you get to the next thing, there's this, this, is, this is important. I, I came up with this question, right? The reason for this question, right? is because you want to find out where they're at. So if I ask this question, 
And I say, you know, Daniel, you know, in karma, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, how would you rate your desire to become debt-free and financially independent? How would you guys rate it? 11. Okay, so then if I was able, this is the key right here. Once you ask, he says 11. And a lot of people are going to say 11, okay, or 10. As soon as he says that, this is the tie down. So then Daniel and Karma, if I can put together a strategy to help you get accomplish that, right? Is there any reason why you wouldn't fully implement it? If you felt comfortable with it, no problem with that? Then in other words, you would go ahead and do that. Okay, great. So what did I just do? I closed them. I got a commitment right there in the beginning so that when we get to the end, we're not having a problem with that. You must teach them to ask that question. If you taught everybody to get asked that question, I guarantee you when they got to the end, they're doing F and A's and they're doing business. They don't ask that question, it's a crapshoot. It's all set up by the questions, 100%. Problem is most of the people that are out there, they're not doing anything remotely close to that. And when they close a the sale, it's because the people just see it so clearly that they said, what do I need to do, right? For most of our people out there, if the client doesn't say, here, here's my money, here's my checkbook, what do I need to do? They don't close anything, right? And then on the debt thing, you go through the whole deal, right? It's un this is like the most unbelievable thing right here. If you can't close people out this, you're a moron, okay? I mean, that's a... Okay, now this is what I would be doing on the debt thing. I say, look, you know, Karma and Daniel, um, if we if we looked at your situation once we do the F and A and stuff for you, right? If we looked at that and we and we had a scenario that that resembled this, that was anything close to this, like this, where we could do that for you, can you think of any reason why you wouldn't go ahead and implement that strategy when we came up with it? In fact, if in fact it was anything close to that, okay, great. See, if you don't ask the question, if I can put, come up with something that's something similar to this and it's going to help you in, in some way like this, even close to this, can you think of any reason why you wouldn't implement that? When, we, when I came up with the solution. What am I doing? I'm closing the smart loan. It's done. Then when I come back with it, we're doing it. Why? Because he told me he would do it. He said there's no reason why he wouldn't. That's why, right? See, this sounds really simple and fundamental, but it ain't happening most of the time, guys. It's not. And you're wondering why you're not doing business. It's not because people aren't trying. It's because their technique and their question asking skills are terrible. Totally. Also, there's momentum in the presentation. And what am I doing right now? I'm creating momentum in my presentation, right? That's totally, the, it's a yes momentum. It's commitment momentum. Every page, every section I go through, I'm getting a commitment to go ahead and do it. Right, So that when I get to the end of my presentation, there is no, I want to think about it. We, we get, I go, all I do is I pull out my F&A and I start filling it out. And there's no even asking to fill it out. I just start doing it. See, there's no like, oh, well, now, would you like to do an f and I would never ask, would you like to do an f and I would get it out and I would say, what, and start asking the information and start doing it. If they stop me, I say, what? Well, you told me that on a scale of, of of you know one to ten, you eleven. You you said eleven. You wanted to go ahead. What, what do you mean? Hold on. What are you what are you talking about? You see, I mean they 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 cannot do it then. And then when you get to the the, the insurance part, right? Same question. You got to get them to ask this question. Now, now, if if we looked at your insurance plan, what you're doing right now, and it was something like this, and we are able to, you know, give you three times more for less money. Right or any of even if we were giving the same amount for less money or whatever the scenario was, if it improved your situation, can you think of any reason why you wouldn't switch from your current program to the program I'm going to present to you? If it's in fact better for you guys, do you have any problem with that? Great. Life sale done, done, done. But see, this is fundamental thing that we are not spending enough time on. They don't know how to do this, and we think they know how to do it. And we th this is the worst thing that happens. We go and we go on three or four appointments with a person. They see you doing this, okay? They see you doing this. They hear you doing it. And where you all make the biggest mistake is you think they get, they get that. 
and they understand what you're doing and that they, when they go out, they're going to do exactly what you did. They don't have any clue. It's not even close. So you have to actually sit down and make sure you teach them it and then you have them parrot it back to you until they have it word for word. Okay. Once they're successful in their own right, once they've created a business and they want to redo it, wonderful. Okay. But, but right now, I know how to close. I know how to get results. You're going to do it exactly like me. Later on, you could, you could improvise, but not until we're certain you can close just like me. Okay. Like I'm looking at Kurt. Kurt, Kurt can close, right? Kurt doesn't do it exactly like me, but it's pretty damn close. He gets all the commitments. I guarantee you Mike does that. I guarantee you George does that. I guarantee you all you guys that get results, you do it. Very similar, right? So, but the thing is, initially you want him to do it exactly like you because the one thing that you all know is the way you do it works right now, right? You all told me that you close seven, eight, nine out of 10, sometimes 10 out of 10. So we already know that way you do it works. So why wouldn't you make them do it exactly like you do it, at least initially, until they've proven that they can do it in a different way later on, okay? In the beginning, you make them do it just like you're right, Jay, exactly like you, okay? So the whole same thing with the thing. If I can do this, right, give you three times, you get the commitment. You close again. You go through the money part, right? This is how you close. This is so simple. So if I, if I go through the, the, you go through the rule of 72, right? But this is the close. This is where you close. You say, look at, you know, Daniel Karma. If you were saving money at three or 6%, and I could show you a way that you could potentially you know, earn 12% or better over time. And instead of ending up with 286 or 140, you could end up as much as a million dollars. If I could show you how you could do that, right? With the money you're currently investing in saving, I'll show you how to improve the rate of return that you're currently getting. Would you allow me to help you put together a strategy to do that and move your money from where it is right now to, to something that's more advantageous for you? Would you allow me to do that for you? Huh? Okay, great. Fantastic. So now we know if they have money somewhere, we're moving it. Okay, we're going to move it. But if you don't ask him, see how when I ask it, I look right at him, very direct. I mean, it's, it's because I want a com firm commitment. And if, if, they, if they tell me, well, you know, I'd have to, I, I, I'd have to see it first, right? Because you get that a lot, right? Well, I'd have to see it first. Now, if he says I have to see it first, I'm going to go, I understand that. But once you see it and it's clearly I can clearly show you that it's substantially a better rate of return over time historically and that, that you can see that it's going to be better for you to make the change. At that point, can I assume I can get your commitment that you're going to go ahead? Great. Fantastic. See, I'm not going to just let them off the hook and say, okay, we'll wait. No, 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 no. I want to get a commitment that when they see it, if it in fact is better, at that point, they're going ahead. And I'm going to ask them point blank and I'm going to get a yes or I'm not coming back. Okay, see, and if you don't teach your people to do that, what they do is they go on 10 appointments and they close one or three. And then pretty soon what they start doing, they start thinking they can't do this and they're not good enough. And it has nothing to do with them being good enough. It has everything to do with their preparation. Everybody's good enough to do what I just, that's just, our business is, is all words. All it is. There's no physical. You get in your car, you turn it on, you drive there, you get out of your car, you pick up your stuff, you walk in, you sit at a table, they give you something to drink, right, or something to eat, and that's the extent of the physicality of Primerica, right? Everything about our business is words. Everything. So all you have to do is teach people the right words, the right words to ask, and the right words in response to the areas of concerns that people have. And if people learn that and they'll actually go and see people, they will be successful. There is no possibility of not having huge success if someone will work once they know the words. Would you all agree with that? Okay, so then why aren't we spending more time on that? Four ways to earn income. See here, one of the things that I would be doing here you need to totally destroy jobs here, guys. You got to totally destroy the concept of having a job. You want to make people in a very professional, nice way feel like a loser because they have a job. That's my goal. My goal when I do this on Tuesday night, right, every Tuesday night, I do this every Tuesday night, my goal is to make you go, 
man, I got to get rid of this job. That's my goal, right? So how do you do that? You talk about an employee. Problems with an employee. You've heard this a bunch of times, right? The problem with an employee is that your job is, is there only a range of income if you're an employee, right? And your employer determines where you live, what car you drive, how you vacation, how much freedom you have, right? Am I right or wrong? Your employer determines that. That's the problem with being an employee. He or she decides where you live, how you vacation, what car you drive. Are you, let me ask you a question, Jatinder, are you happy with that, knowing that? If there's a way that you could change that, would you be open to exploring that? Okay, great. You see, ask some questions. Self-employed, you destroy the self-employed thing. If they're self-employed, they think they own a business. Look, if you have to physically be there, you are not, you don't own a business. You're self-employed. Think about this. If you have a job, if you have it, if you're self-employed and you physically have to be there in order for you to earn income, right, which is what doctors and attorneys, if they're not there, unless they have a firm, right, and they have lawyers or doctors working for them, 99% of all attorneys and lawyers and hairstylists and real estate people, they don't, they don't show up physically. They don't make any money. Okay, that's the problem with being self-employed. If you're, if you own a business, see, business owners don't have to be there. I am a business owner today. I come to my office Tuesday, is it Tuesday, and sometimes on Saturdays if I'm town. Okay, so I come on Tuesdays. The only time I'm here all day on Tuesdays is when I do my my this today. Today I'm here all day. Okay, but normally I come here. I get here around seven. Sometimes eight, because I don't go on till eight, eight fifteen. So sometimes I'll get here at eight, right? Maybe not a good example for my people, but I'm rich and I don't care anymore. Okay. And so I get here, right? And I do my 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 thing here, right? From eight, and I'm here and I'm talking to people. Usually I'm out of here by nine thirty. So I invest about an hour and a half, typical week for me. I'm here in my office, about. Uh, on, a, on a good week, I'm here an hour and a half. In a bad week, I'm here five hours. The rest of the time, who knows what I'm doing, right? Why? Because I own a business, and it doesn't require me to personally be engaged anymore to, like, to the extent that it used to. Why is that? Because I developed a bunch of people, okay? Because I taught them to do what I've just been sharing with you the last few minutes here. That's why. And if you will do the same thing with a bunch of enthusiasm, right, and passion, teach people what to do and not get bored with doing it, you too can have freedom and own a business. So you ask the question, right? And of course, investor to me is the sexiest way to make money, right? Because you don't have to do damn thing but watch your money come in, right? So I always talk about that. I say, look, so you ask that question of the two ways, right? Which pill do you the most? Whatever, 100% what, of the time, what's the answer? Always, okay? But everybody's always over here, aren't they? Okay? So the, the, the key is how do you get from here to there? We have the solution to that. You have the solution to that. Whether you believe it or not, whether you've struggled or succeeded or whatever the case is, even doesn't matter your situation, Primerica still has a solution to that. You have it at your disposal. That's your major selling point, Daniel. You can take them from here to there. See, I can teach you, Bob, how to go from there to there. If I could teach you in the next 18 to 24 months, right, to go from right here to right here to this side of the quadrant, right, and I can show you how to effectively double or triple or quadruple your income. Can you think of any logical reason that you wouldn't get in business with me? You see what I'm saying there, right? I ask him just like that. And if he says, no way, what does that mean? He's in. And once he's in, what do we do now? Teach them how to set up appointments is what we do now. Because if I can get him in and, we, and I teach him how to set up appointments and now he takes me to go see five of his closest, warmest people in his life, right? And I go close three or four transactions and recruit one or two people for him and show him this is a piece of cake, right? Because I can close, 
Because if he puts me in quality, I can close or I show him this thing works. What's he going to be thinking at that point? How excited is he going to be? He's going to be jacked up, right? And know what's going to happen? For me to get him motivated to set up more appointments is going to be a piece of cake. Piece of cake. That's all he's going to want to do is, well, you Hector, I got this other person you got to talk to. And that's what I used to have, man. I remember when I was training Steve Voskis. Hey, I got this guy. I got this guy. He used to put me in front of, put me in front of tons of people. All kinds of people. And then I, and then the, the, this is the big deal right here, okay? Go through the whole thing. You've heard, you can listen to the tape, but this is the part you've got to sell, guys, okay? This is the part you have to sell. What the problem for most people is, okay, is they think about earning money in terms of hourly wage or salary. 90% of the people in America, they think, that's why when you talk to them about making 200 grand a year or 300 or 400 grand a year, no one believes you can do it. They can't relate. The only reason they can't relate is they're thinking in terms of hourly wage and salary. That's why they have a problem with big income. If you tell me, if you come to me and say, yeah, this guy makes 500 grand a year, I go, well, that's, of course, What's, that's not a big deal, right? But you, at, you talk to a person that's making 50 grand and talk about 500 grand, they go, whoa, how do they do that? They must be incredible. These people must be like supernatural, right? See, that's what they're thinking. Why are they thinking that? Because they're going, what hourly wage could you make that equals to 500 grand a year? What salary? Who's going to pay you a salary of 500 grand a year, right? That's what they're thinking. That's what 90% of the people you sit down with, that's what they're thinking, so how do you change that thinking? You've got to explain, override, and leverage. That's what you've got to explain to them. You've got to get them to understand override and leverage, okay? If you don't get them to understand override and leverage, they're, gonna, they're still going to gonna like what they saw, but they're still not going to believe that it could happen to them. They're not going to understand it. And, what, and clarity is the key. See, if there's no clarity, you're going to have problems with people, okay? Haven't you noticed whenever you have problems with your spouse, it's always because there's not clarity in what the other person's saying, right? That's where all the problems come from, right? There's no clarity there or there's assumption taking place. So you, which, what you do is you do this. You go, look. And I would talk to them. Most people think in terms of that. Let me just say, do you have, and you ask them, do, do anybody have a job in here still? Nobody, you, you shouldn't have a job. You shouldn't be here. Who had a job before? You know, Brian, what'd you do before you were here? Construction, okay. You work for yourself or you work for somebody? You work for yourself. Anybody have a job? Who had a job? Okay, you had a job, okay. You're in the, you're in the public sector though, right? You're the, nah, that's, you're no good either. It still works with that. What'd you do? Sell paint, okay. What were you making a year? 36,000, okay. So you're making $36,000 a year selling paint. So let's say that I'm talking to him. He was making thirty-six thousand. So I say, uh, "What's your name again?" Alan. I say, "Alan." Okay. Remember, you know, I didn't remember your name. You're not doing enough business yet, Alan. Okay, Alan. Yep. Alan. Uh, if your employer's paying you thirty-six thousand dollars a year, okay. What do you think he needs to be making off of your efforts in order to be, afford to pay you $36,000 a year? At least double, right? So probably at least probably around 100 grand is, is probably would be realistic. Would you agree with that? So then if he is, if he is making 100 grand a year on your efforts, and he's paying you 36, okay? Because he's not, if he's paying you 36, he's actually paying you 40 something because there's social security and all these other things that you're not aware of that he's paying behind the scenes, okay? So he's probably, with all the benefits and taxes that he has to pay on your account, he's probably, you cost him, if he's paying you 36, he's co you're costing him about 50 grand a year. That's what you cost him, all right? But if he makes 100, the difference what he pay, what you cost him and what he makes, right, on that business is what? 50 grand. That 50 grand, Alan, is his override on you. It's the difference in what you make him and what he pays you is his override. If you're an employee, 
you are all being overridden. Everybody. I don't care if you're making 200 grand a year. You got to be worth a lot more than 200 grand. If someone's paying you 100, then you're worth two or 300,000 a year. Okay? So, Alan, you're being overridden right now. If I could help you get to the point where you're the overrider as opposed to being overridden, would you be open to getting involved in something like that? If it made sense to you and you thought you could see, see or, you could do it. Okay, great. All right, well, let me show you how this thing works, right? Because think about your employee. Are you the only employee at your job? How many employees do you have at where you work? A hundred. So let's say that he's making a hundred dollars, hundred fifty grand per employee in overrides. See, what's he making? A lot of money, right? Even if it was ten grand per per employee, it's pretty damn good at a hundred, right? Would you agree with that? Okay. So you can see now how he could make a lot of money, right? Because he's taking advantage of a thing called leverage. Do you see that? That's how. That's why being a business owner is better than being an employee. Because you can now start leveraging your time and energy. So look, in our business, I'm going to go back here. I'm almost done here, so oops. Yeah, exactly. So the RVP, so I say, look, this is how you explain it. So look, if you go see, if you're, if you train this, you're, 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 you're an RVP, you have a district manager, and I would use me as the example, you go do that, you make an override, right? If, 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 if I go write a, a, a loan for six, and I make 655, right? And you're not even there, you haven't even seen the client, you don't know the client, you'll never know the client, you had nothing to do with securing the client, right? You make $1,160, Alan. What do you think of that? Do you like the fact that you didn't have to do anything but teach me how to do it and you make money even though you're not physically involved? You like that concept? Okay. See what I'm telling? I'm selling the concept, okay? That, the concept is what you want to sell, right? You want to get, because people are, are basically greedy, right? So let's appeal to their sense of greed right here, okay? So on, on, the, on the insurance, if, if you make 335, if I make 335, you make 305 again, you're never, you're not there, you don't know the client. You had nothing to do with this client, right? And then on the investment, I make 50 and you make 85, you make 1550, I make a thousand dollars. And I want you to think about this, okay? So I go see the client, I get the client, I find the client, I do all the work, I do every single part of it, I go close these transactions, I'm excited because you taught me how to do it, I couldn't do it without your help. I make a thousand bucks and you make 1550 and you're not even there, you're nowhere to be seen, you're, you're watching Survivor. Can you think about that? You get a call. I want you to imagine you get a call from me tonight, right? And I say, Alan, I closed a loan for ninety-five thousand. I closed an insurance sale that was seventy dollars a month. I closed a four hundred dollar a month in PAC on a mutual fund. And all the while, you're going cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. You're figuring out what you made, right? You made fifteen hundred dollars, and you weren't even there. Now, what if I did this two or three times a month? What if you had ten people like me, part timers? that you taught me everything to do, and each of us did one loan, one insurance transaction, one investment like this. If it was 10 times 15, 1,500, what does that may, mean to you? 15 grand a month, right? A month. You see how I got him to say it? 15 grand a month. And then if you went and saw a couple of clients yourself, you made $2,500 per client, right? That's another five grand. If you add 25 to five, what is that? 15 grand to 20 to five, it's 5,000 is what? 20,000. 20,000 times 12 months is what? Can you now see how you could go from making 50 grand to $240,000 a year? Can you understand that now? Because see, a lot of people have problems with, oh, I can't see myself doing it. All it is is finding 10 people that you can develop that on a part-time basis could do a loan and insurance and an investment. You live in Southern California, Alan. There's about 20 million people in Southern California. You don't think over the next year or two or three, you could find 10 people on a part-time basis that, could, that you could teach how to do that if you were really diligently, actively engaged in that process day after day. Do you believe you could do that? Especially if I taught you how to do everything? Can you see how there's be per about impossible for you to fail as long as you weren't lazy? Okay, you ready to go? Fantastic. That, see, you gotta, that's all you do. If you did this every time and your people did that, be closing people left and right if they actually ask those questions like that. 
right? And all of you could do that. Every one of you could, every one of you could recruit four or five or 10 people a month. No doubt in my mind about that. Every one of you, no, no, no exception. So that's it. Recruit and develop. Let's tear up. Let's have a great month in May. See you guys. For the next 75 minutes, sit back and enjoy listening to Hector Lamarck during a combined base shop training meeting where he covers appointment setting and presentation basics. There's three things that have to happen when you're getting started. How many of you are, are licensed already? Raise your hand if you're licensed, okay. All right, a lot of you are. Um, the key to really making this thing go, there's three things that are really super important. If you want, if, you, if I recruit you today, okay, if I recruit a new person today, what's the key to getting some, a new recruit off to a great start and then uh, not only off to a great start, but being productive? Because if I recruit you and I, and, and I don't get you licensed, you're basically worthless to me, okay? So number one, if I recruit you, I've got to get you licensed. That's critically important. If I recruit you, I also have to get you in the field, right? Because if we don't get in the field, if you don't take me to go see people, then we can't recruit anybody for you, we can't build a business for you, and we can't close any transactions, which means you can't make any money, which means there's, you know, you're not going to stay around. Okay. A lot of you, why you recruit people, and then I'm going to show you why you recruit people and you don't get them to do anything or you don't you know, retain people. Retention if you want to retain somebody, if you want to, if you recruit them and you want them to stay in the business, the key to getting somebody to stay in the business is to get them results quickly, okay? To get them results relatively quickly. You've got to make sure that they get some results or they're going to think that they can't do this and they're going to quit. So you have to get people results, all right? So the first thing you've got to teach, if I recruit you, I'm sitting down with you and I recruit you, I'll use this for now. This is the very first thing I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get your IBA, right? That's, that's, I'm just going to, IBA, and I'm going to get your top 25 list. Okay, that's the, that's the very first thing you do. You got to get that done, okay? So we're sitting down. You say yes. I get your IBA filled out. I get a check from you for, or a credit card for $199, and I get this top 25 list. Why, I have to get this top 25 list. If I'm recruiting you and you don't give me a top 25 list, we're not going any further. We're stopping right now, okay? Because if you don't give me a list of people to go see, there's no way I can help you build a business. Now, if you ever have somebody that you're recruiting and they don't give you that list, forget about them and move on to the next person. This person isn't going to be somebody you're going to be able to work with. You have to give me that top 25 list because it's the only way we're going to be able to build a business for you, okay? Critically important. It's not, this is not uh, uh, up for discussion. It's mandatory, right? And if you're not doing that, that's a huge reason why you're not getting results. Okay, you've got to get that list. Okay, let's assume you got the IBA. I got your top 25. What do I do with you next? Okay, what I do next with you, and the single most important thing you do with a new person, nothing is even remotely close to being as, poor, as important as what I'm about to say right now. It's the most important thing is I'm going to teach you how to set up appointments in your warm market. So I'm going to teach you. This is so important. I can't even emphasize how important this is. I'm going to sit down with you, and I'm, if it takes me a half hour or an hour or two hours, this is what I'm going to do with you first. Because... It's going to take you, what's it taking now to get licensed? 60 days at least, right? Okay, it's probably going to take 60 days to get your license from the time you submit your IBA to the time you to actually take a test and get a license. At least it's 60 days, right? In that 60 days, there's really not a lot you can do, right? Because you're not licensed, you're not able. You could do loans, I guess, but that's about it. But really, there's not much else you could do. You can't legally, you know, do presentations and do all the stuff you, you do when you're licensed. So really, your job is to get me in front of people. That's your, that's your mission. That's your job description. The first 60 days before you get a license is your job is to get me in front of people so I can help you build a business, so I can recruit some people and close some transactions and teach you how to do the business 
so that you have a chance to be successful at this thing, okay? No appointments, then we can't do anything. Got to teach people how to set up appointments, all right? And then the second thing you do, once, once I'm certain you know how to set up an appointment, right? You're really good at this, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. This next thing is I'm going to show you how to do a presentation that closes sales and recruits. I'm going to teach you how to do a presentation that closes sales and recruits, okay? Because if I just teach you how to do a presentation and regurgitate information and give information, but it doesn't teach you how to close, I might as well not teach you anything. What's the, that's not going to do you any good unless you have the ability to get somebody to part with a check. You have no chance of being successful in our business long range. You hear what I'm saying there? Unless you develop the ability to get somebody to part with a check, you have no chance to be successful here. You have to be able to get somebody to see enough value that they're willing to write a check and give it to you. If you can't get them to do that, you can't recruit them, right? Because they got to give you a 199 to get in the business. And if you can't give, give, give you a check for, a, for an investment or for a, for a mutual fund, right? Then you can't do that either. You can't make any money. So you have to be able to get a check from somebody. Am I making sense? Have to, right? That's got to be a priority to you. Okay, and then the third thing, once I teach you how to do that, okay, right, we're a sale and a recruit, then it starts all over at appointment setting again, right? Because if I teach you, if I, if I don't say I don't recruit you, or recruit a person, but I close a sale and I get referrals, then I got to call the set up appointments with the referrals, right? Well, let's say I do recruit you. If I recruit you, then I have to teach you how to set up appointments in your warm market so you could take me in that warm market so I can go recruit some people and make some sales, right? That, that's our business right there. That's it. There's nothing more to it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you saw this morning, the SMART program and mutual funds and variable annuities and blah, 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 right? That's all stuff that you can learn in a classroom. That's important stuff, okay? But this is the most important. There's always things that are important, and then there's things that are most important, right? Okay, so we need, we, need a, we need to prioritize what's the most important. This is the most important, okay? If you can do this, see, even if you don't know everything about SMART, even if you don't know everything about mutual funds, even if you don't know anything about life insurance, but you can set up an appointment, and you can do a presentation that gets them to part with a check, it doesn't really that matter that much how much you know about anything. It really doesn't. It's important, but it's more important that you can get somebody to make a change and move forward. That's the most important thing, okay? And anyways, I'm going to teach you all about all the products and everything as I'm field training you anyways, right? If I take you out in the field, we're going to pick up policies. I'm going to show you how those policies work. We're going to pick up uh, their investment information. I'm going to show you how to do that, you know, how to redo their investment strategies that they have. We're going to pick up their loan information. I'm going to show you how to put together the loan proposal or whatever. I'm going to show you all that as I'm teaching you the business, right? But if I don't have an appointment, I can't do any of that. I have to have an appointment with you so I can show you what to do. Am, am I making any sense to any of you here? Okay. Okay. All right. So what do we do first, okay? What we do first is we set up the appointment. Okay, so if I recruit you, right? Who wants to volunteer? Anybody want to volunteer? So let's say I just I'm I just recruited Harriet, right? Harriet Marks, okay? And Harriet's ready to get going in the business. She's she's giving me her her IBA. We, I've got that. I've got her top twenty five. And now what's the most important thing I need to do? Teach teach her how to set up appointments. Teach her say it. Teach her how to set up appointments. Okay. That's the most important thing. So I said, Harry, okay, now what we're going to do now is uh, the most important thing for you to do, okay, since you, it's going to take you a little, like maybe 60 days to get licensed. Legally, you can't really do much except set up appointments, okay? And by the way, the most important thing for you to do right now is set up appointments and put me in front of people. I'm going to teach you how to do that. You call the people. We set up the appointment. I'm going to go in, and because I'm, I'm pretty good at this thing, I know what I'm doing. If you put me in front of people that like you and trust you, okay, 
I'm probably going to do business with, I don't know, anywhere from 70 to 100% of the people we get in front of. So if you set up 10 appointments for me, I'm going to do business. We're going to do business with 7 to 10, and we're probably going to get two or three or maybe even more than that recruited into your business, and I can help you do open a business. So I want you to just realize the most important thing for you to do is to learn how to set up appointments and put me in front of people. You got that? Got it. Okay. Well, listen, let me show you how we... See what I just did there? Because I don't want her to think, well, let me learn about this before I do that. Let me do... Have you ever had anybody do that with you? Right? I want to know about all this. No, 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 no. We don't need to know crap except for this, okay? That's all I want you to do right now. Appointments, okay? We'll teach you all that stuff as we're doing it. And people that are really smart, they definitely don't want to do anything until they know everything. Okay, the smarter they are, the more they want to know everything before they do anything. Okay, and you need to set their butt straight before you go any further so we can help them be successful. All right, you don't let them. This is this, now we're doing my thing. I'm, I'm in charge right now. I'm the one that knows what to do. You're not going to tell me how we're going to do it. I'm going to tell you how to do it. With me? Okay, now, I'm not going to be rude or obnoxious or anything like that, but I'm going to be very firm with this person. So if she fights me on, well, you know, I like to know a little more before I do it. I would say, if she said that to me, say, I would like to know a little I'd bit. I'd like to know a little more about this before I do it. Okay. So what you're saying to me is you don't believe that what we're doing for people is good yet. Is that what you're saying to me? No. You're not clear about that yet, right? No. You're not. Okay. So let's go over this one more time then. Then I would sit <laughs> her down and I'd go over that presentation one more time. I'm serious. Because if she's, she wants to know more, she still doesn't understand what we're doing yet. That means I didn't do a very good job explaining how our program works and how good it is and how good it is for people. Because if she really believed that it was fantastic for people, she would be excited to take me to go see people. So I didn't do a very good job on the front end getting her to see how awesome it is what we do for people. Are you with me? Anytime you have somebody balking in the beginning and they don't want to take you to see somebody, you did a crappy job of, of closing them on what we do for people. They don't get it yet. Because if she really saw that we say we put a million eight hundred thousand dollars in this one, you know, the, on the loan strategy, and we gave them, you know, four hundred fifty-five thousand instead of one hundred fifty for thirty-nine dollars less a month, and we gave them instead of two hundred eighty-six thousand in retirement, we gave them a million two, and she doesn't catch that, and she's still balking. She doesn't got. She doesn't understand that yet. She can't. You with me? She doesn't get it. That's my fault. That's my fault because I didn't do a good job on that. If I do a great job on that then this is, we're not going to have this issue. But so what I'd say, look, the most important thing for you to do, Harriet, right now, is after I reclose you, then if I would sit down and I'd go over it one more time, then I'd go through, I'd say, now, based on what I showed you, we, we put a $1,800,000 and got them debt free. We gave them four, three times the coverage, $39 less a month. We gave them a million two instead of 286000 Which part of this whole thing do you still need to think about before we set up some appointments? I'm ready to go. Okay. All right. Okay. You see what I did there? Which part of it you have to think about before we get going now? So you should not ever have an issue if you close them correctly on the, on the product. So now I said, this is what I want you to do, all right? Now we're going to call, Harriet, we're going to call your, the, the 10 people that you have, you have the best relationships with that like you and trust you the most, okay? And the reason, tell her why I want to call those people. Because a lot of people, when you first recruit them, they go, they don't want to take you to see their best warm friends, you know? You know why they don't why don't they want to take you? This is why. They think you're going to go over and try to hard sell their good friends and their friends are going to call them up later and say, "Why the hell did you bring this Hector character over? I mean, what's wrong with you?" right? They don't want that phone call. They don't want that conversation. That's why they don't want to take you to go see their warmest market is because they're afraid you're going to go over there and try to sell them something or get them involved in something that they don't want or need, right? And they and they're afraid of that. They're really afraid of being rejected by their warm market. That's what the cold deal is, okay? That's the, you know, those of you who are not in your head, that's how you felt, right? You know what I'm talking about, okay? That's how you probably felt too, am I right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go, okay? Everyone feels that way, so you've got to deal with that. So so she, if she says, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't really want to see these people, I said, look, when we go see your warmest market, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to go over, I'm going to show them this presentation that I just showed you. We're going to do exactly the same thing. And what we're going to do is if we, can, if we can't help them, if we can't make Harry a substantial difference in their current situation, I simply will not. I will not ask them to do business with us. Is that fair enough to you? 
if we can improve their situation substantially, we have an obligation to ask them to go ahead. Wouldn't you agree with that? Oh, yes. Okay. All right. So I just want you to feel comfortable. I would never, this is important, I would never, ever do anything to compromise your relationship with these people that you're going to entrust me with, ever. You can count on that because if I ever went to go, you took me to see your best friend or your brother or sister, something like that, and I was a jerk and I was pushy or any of those things, would you ever take me to see anybody again? No way, way, right? Okay, so it's not in my best interest to ever do that, is it? So I want you to feel comfortable. You feel better now? Oh, yeah. What did I just do there? Hey, folks, that is a huge reason why you don't get people to do this. They think you're going to go over, hard close their family, and they don't want you to do that. So you take care of the objection in advance so it doesn't become an issue. That's all you do. Because we're not, because if I go in there and we can't help them, I'm going to ask for them. But if we can, of course, I'm going, to, I'm going to try to close them. Absolutely. Okay? So now let's say now she feels good. Now what are we going to do? I'm going to show you how to set up the appointment. All right? Let's say that you call. I want you to call Sean. All right? Whatever. This is what I want you to say. All right? I want you to call Sean. And I want you to say, hi, Sean, this is Harriet. How you doing? And chit chat for a minute. All right. Just how's the kids? How's the family? Whatever that you, you, you know, you know them better than I do. You just chit chat. And then I want you to say this. I want you to say, hey, listen, Sean, the reason I'm calling is I'm getting involved in a new business. I'm really very excited about it. As a matter of fact, Sean, I'm thinking about making a career change. I mean, it looks that fantastic. It looks that good. I'm actually thinking about making a career change. But before I make a career change, I want to get some people's opinions that I trust and I respect like you, Sean. Would you help me out? Would you take a look at it and tell me what you think about it before I make that plunge and make a a full-time commitment? Would you do that for me? And what is Sean going to say? Oh, yeah. He's going to say yes, right? If he likes you and trusts you. I'm assuming assuming he likes you and trusts you. He's not going to say no. And then if he says that, then I want you to say, okay, listen. Um, I've got my trainer, Hector, he's got Wednesday and Thursday open this, this week. Which day's better for you? Give him an alternative choice, Wednesday or Thursday. And then he says, say he says Thursday. Then I want you to say, well, he's got six or eight o'clock available. Which one of those times is better for you? Okay. Okay. All right. So now I want you to, 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 to repeat that. I want you to do that for me. Hi, Sean. This is Harriet. Uh, how you doing? Long time no talk to. What's happening? Listen, uh, I was wondering if you could help me. I am starting in a new business or opportunity, and I'd really like your opinion. I was wondering if you could help me out. Uh, would Monday or Wednesday be good for you? Okay. That's pretty good. All right. Great. <laughs> okay. That, that wasn't quite it. All right. This is what I want you to say. Okay. I want you to say, hey, Sean, this is Harriet. How you doing? Blah, blah, blah. The reason I'm calling you reason I'm calling you. Okay. The reason I'm calling you is I'm starting a new business. As a matter of fact, I'm possibly thinking about making a career change. And before I make that career change, I'd like to get some opinions from people that I really respect and trust like you, Sean, before I make that commitment. Would you help me out? Would you take a look at this thing, pick it apart, and then give me your honest opinion? Uh, about it before I make that 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 big commitment. Would you do that for me? Would you help me out? Sure. Okay, now let's go again. Hi, Sean. This is Harriet, and I was just calling to. I got to write it down. And... Okay. <laughs> but look, 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 we're not going to go through this over and over. But I see what I'm doing here. What's happening? I what you guys are not doing is you tell you do this, but it would. I don't have time right now. But I would do this until she had it down. Word for word, without having to look at any paper or anything, okay? And I would go back and forth. It would probably take us, if we had time, it would probably, within a half hour, we probably could get you to do it word for word. I don't know. Okay? No, 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 no. I I mean, we would have it down, okay? I mean, I guarantee you, if we went, okay, let's one more time. And I'd go back and forth, and then, and we're going to just keep role playing it until it, till it's, you have it perfectly. So you can do it with the same pauses I have, with the same inflection, the same timing, the same, uh, you know, tonality, the same everything. I'm going to just have you do it until I feel comfortable because I'm going to go 
That's incredible. Man, you are awesome. You're going to do so great. It's unbelievable. Listen, you're the best person I've ever trained. Unbelievable, <laughs> right? Because I'm going to give her all tons of confidence, right? You're awesome. I mean, you're really good. I mean, you're a natural, right? I'm going to make her feel really special and comfortable. And then I'm going to also do, I'm going to get her ready for, for, the, for the, any of the challenges that are going to come up, okay? Because what's going to happen when she calls her friends, right? Her friends are going to, this is the most common thing that's going to happen. Her friends are going to go, uh, what is this thing, right? What you, basically, you're going to say, what is this thing? Are you going to try to, I don't want to buy anything. I'm not interested in anything. That's what's going to come up. It's, it does all the time, right? And that's part of the deal, right? So if, you're, if, if your friend, if you call up Sean and Sean says, well, what is this thing? This is what I want you to say. Well, it has to do with, with, with uh, financial services, okay? Different investments, insurance, all the kinds of things that have to do with money. Uh, I don't have all the answers right now. That's the reason I need you to take a look at this before you make, you know, make any kind of decision. Would, would, you, would you help me out? Just say that again. Would you help me out? Would you help me don't out? go into detail. Just say, would you help me out? Because the more you talk, the worse it's going to be, okay? All right, you start talking and explaining, you might as well put a gun to your head and shoot yourself right then. You're done, all right? Don't, don't be doing that. I don't want you to do that. Don't start explaining. Say, look, I don't have all the answers. That's the reason I need you to take a look at this. I'm being trained right now. That's why I need your help. That's the reason I'm calling you. Would you help me out? Just keep saying, would you help me out? Would you help me out? Would you help me out? All right? Because if they, if they like you, if they're your friend, and you say, would you, if somebody, if your good friend that you like said, would you help me out, would you say, no? You're not going to say no. You're going to say, yeah, I'll say, sure, I'll help you, right? You're going to do that, okay? So if they do that, the other thing is if they say, well, you know, Harriet, I just, I, I, I'm not interested in buying anything, okay? That's going to come up. Or if you feel like they're like thinking you're going to try to sell them something they don't want to buy, right? And they put you off, okay? If they say, I'm not interested in buying anything, this is what I want you to say. I want you to say, Hey, look, you don't have any obligation to anything. Really, I just need your help. Before I make that commitment to make a career change, I want to get some opinions. If you, this is what you say. If you see something that you like and that fits into your, your particular situation and you want to take advantage of it, that's fantastic. Go ahead. If you don't, that's fantastic too. Not a problem. I don't want you to feel any pressure. This is really for me to help me, okay? Do not, under any circumstances, say, don't worry. Put your checkbook away. We're not going to sell you anything because that is a lie, okay? Because if I can sell you something, I am selling you something that night, okay? Don't you ever say we're not going to sell you anything. Don't you ever say we're not going to sell you anything, ever, okay? You say if you see something you like and you want to take advantage of it, fantastic. If you don't, that's okay too. Really, all I want is your opinion. Would you help me out? See, because I already know when we get in there, they're going to see it because right now they're going to make a decision based on no information. When they get in there and we start showing them, they're going to go from this to like this, right? They're going to be wanting to know more and they're going to be excited about it and they're going to see. So I don't want to deal with all that stuff right now. I just want to get in the door, okay? If I get in the door, then I, there's a very high probability with my skill level we're going to get something done, okay? You got to get in the door. You got to get the appointment. Right, Danny? Right, Daniel? If you get in the door, you're like a 70, 90 to 100% closing ratio, right? Depending on the credibility of the person you're training, all right? The reason I say 70, if I'm training somebody credible, it's 90 to 100, okay? If they're credibility suspect, it goes down. So, uh, so that's what you say, okay? If you see that, and if, if they, that, 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 that's those that's generally what comes up those are the things that come up okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to role play this back and forth i'm not going to do it right now but i'm going to role play this back and forth until you know harriet's able to do it as well as me with no hesitation okay no like ah uh, you don't want any of that no pauses just boom 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 and we're gonna and i'm gonna be patient enough to go through it with her as many times as necessary until she gets it because if, if Harriet has a good warm market and is credible, right, and she's got a top 25 list and she feels like she can do it, she's probably going to set up five or 10 or 15 appointments for me if she feels. 
Now, on the other hand, if I don't teach her how to set up appointments and I say, well, just call some of your friends and set up some appointments and call me when you have them, and I don't take the time to train her to make her feel comfortable, this is what's going to happen, okay? She's going to be, okay, she's going to be afraid, right? Any of you afraid in the beginning? Okay, she's going to be afraid. And what fear causes, she's going to be paralyzed. You've got to make sure that she is not afraid. And, if I don't, and the only way to get her not afraid is to teach her how to do that. With me? Otherwise, she's going to be afraid. So I've got to make sure she's not afraid. Because fear is death in our business. Right? Most of you know why you don't do anything? You're afraid. All of you. Right? That's why you guys don't do hardly anything. Because if you weren't afraid, right, if you weren't afraid of anything, right, how many more people would you talk to today? And you talk to everybody, but you're you are afraid. So they don't talk to you like uh, unless like the if, unless it's like perfect, and they go, "Hey, how are you? What do you do? Can you offer me something?" You don't talk to them, right? It's all fear based, though. All of your problems. Let me just tell you, the reason you'll either be successful or or, or not be successful is your ability to deal with the fear. It's really it. It's the whole deal. If you can over, it doesn't mean you'll never not be afraid. It's that you deal with it. See, I was always afraid. I was always nervous, but I just did it in spite of the way I felt. See, those of you that don't do nothing, you feel the fear and you don't do anything because you feel too much fear. Some of you, like, like, like Daniel, right? I'm guarantee you he was a little afraid when he first started, but he was more interested in being successful than, 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 than being comfortable. So he did it anyways. Okay. That's really the only difference between people that do real well and people that don't. Right? Some people are afraid and they do it anyways because they're more, they're more uh, concerned with being successful than being comfortable. And some people are more concerned with being comfortable than being successful. That's the difference. It's really the difference. There's nobody in here that's not. All of you are smart enough to do what I just did to set up an appointment, except some of you go, oh my God, if I call them, what are they going to think about me? They're going to think I'm pushy. They're going to think I'm trying to sell them some. They're going to think I'm trying to make money on them. They're going to think this. They're going to think that. And you go, you spend your whole thing worrying about what they're going to think about you that you don't ever do a damn thing, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? Some of you today, you know there's people you should call, and you're going to talk to yourself out of calling them today because uh, I'll call them tomorrow. The time is probably not good for them today or something, and you'll do some goofy thing to talk yourself out of actually doing something, right? And then you'll set yourself back, and then you'll feel bad about yourself because you didn't do it, and then it's like this negative spiral deal that you got going on, right? So um, thank you very much, Harriet. Appreciate it. Thank you. So, um, so you've got to do that. You've got to teach them how to set up appointments, all right? And once you teach them how to set up the appointments and you get some appointments, you go on those appointments, then you've got to teach them how to do a great presentation. So this is what you do. Can I get a couple up here? Tony and Angie. Okay. And by the way, when you when you want to go on appointments, always write down their name on something in front of you. Okay, just do it. Always leave me. It's important because if you especially if you get a little nervous, you forget their name. You go, uh, uh, what was your name by the way again? Not doesn't work out. This doesn't, doesn't doesn't build rapport when you do that. Okay, so um, Tony and Angie, I would write it down and you say their names a lot. Tony and Angie. Tony and Angie. Tony and Angie. Okay, say it you know five, six, seven, eight times. Make sure you get the name down. Tony and Angie. So what I would do first, it's really important how you set up your presentation. Okay. It's very important. So if I'm, I, first of all, we meet at the door and they let me in. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. What I would do first of all is, is as soon as I walk in a door, okay, if somebody's home, I'm scanning everywhere to look for something that I can relate to, that I can find common ground with them. That's the first thing I'm looking around. And I'm trying to see if I see anything that I can relate to, right? whether it's, uh, you know, jewelry or it's, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm into golf, right? If I see anything having to do with golf or if I see anything, you know, I have a Harley Davidson. So maybe I see they're into bikes or I don't know. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, I'm looking right. Or a piece of furniture that's something like I own or I don't know anything. I'm, I'm, I'm looking right because I'm going to find I'm going to go, oh, where'd you get that? Or, you know, you guys ride motorcycles. So do I. What, what kind do you have? And just to get a, just to get the rapport going. You know what I'm talking about? 
to break the ice. I'm just looking for common ground. And as soon as I find it, we'll talk a little bit about that. And then I'll say, you know, Tony and Angie, listen, I just want to thank you so much for allowing us to come here today. Um, Harriet, help me out again here, okay? She's going to, Harriet's going to be my trainee, all right? So Harriet's sitting over here. You can just sit here. You don't have to do anything, but nod your head, Harriet, okay? And by the way, when I take, when I, when before we go, come into the appointment, this is what I tell Harriet, okay, Harriet, when we go in there, I want you to introduce me and then I want you to shut up, okay? And I want you to say anything else, okay? Unless they ask you a, a direct question, answer the question and then shut up. I don't want you talking. I don't want you putting your two cents at all because you might say something that will screw the whole thing up because you're not, you're still green and you don't know. And I don't want to have to mop up your mess, all right? So I want you to just be quiet. Sit there, nod your head, okay, like that, smile, and agree, all right? That's it. Bring a notepad, and, and I, you're, you laugh, right? And will you actually tell people that? Yes, just like that. Shut up, don't say anything, all right? And the reason is because I've been on enough appointments in my life where the recruit started talking, and they talked us right out of sale and right out of a, of a recruit. I can't tell you how many times that happened to me, okay? So I got to the point where I could either just tell them the way it was or try to be nice and not hurt their feelings and, and screw up their potential career. You with me? Okay, I'm not going to let them screw it up, so I just don't want you talking, all right? And if I hear you start getting off and start talking, I'm going to kick you under the table, and that means shut up, okay? Okay, so your job is just to sit there and be a cheerleader for me and be nodding and get the yes moment and going with the head nod, all right? That's all I want you to do. And so then I... so. What I do is I, I say, well, thank you so much for allowing us to come and, and see you tonight. And, and Harriet, of course, thanks you. Uh, it's really great. She's being trained, and, and this is really for her benefit. So as we're going through this thing, you know, a lot of the questions and things I'm going to be doing is really to help her so that she can learn the business. And if there's something that you see that you like, that's great. I'm going to be covering three things. Uh, one is who we are, our company, because we feel it's really important. Uh, it's really important that you feel comfortable with our company and that I feel like it's very solid and, and, and um, a very stable and reliable company. And the reason for that is because we're going to ask you for some referrals for Harriet. And if you don't think our company is fantastic, then, of course, you're probably not going to give us any, give Harriet any referrals, right? So what am I setting up here? I'm setting up the referrals, okay? Okay, then I say the second thing we're going to talk about, and I think the most important is what we do for people, okay? And I think you're going to be very impressed when I show you what we do for people. It's pretty amazing some of the things we're able to do for, for families. And um, we want you to feel really comfortable about what we do for people, again, for the same reason, so that, you know, if you would feel really comfortable referring people that you care about to Harriet. And then the third thing is I'm going to talk to you about is uh, kind of what's in it for you. Um, can I ask you a question, Tony and, and uh, Angie? Uh, do you guys, what do you do right now, Tony? What's your job? Construction. Stay at home. Okay, so you're in construction. Um, Tony. Do you plan on doing construction till you retire, till you're 65, till you can't do it anymore? Okay. So what's your plan right now to not do that? You have a plan on us. You don't really, but you don't really want to be doing that. Okay, but you don't have a plan. So if, if I could show you a way um, with a really fabulous company that offers really great uh, products and services to, to people, if I could show you a way that you could maybe build a business and get yourself to a point where you guys are making maybe double or triple or even quadruple what you currently are earning. Would you be open uh, to exploring that and, and, and you know, considering something like that? Would you be open to doing that? So you'd be curious about finding out how it works and how you get compensated and all that? You, okay, well then I'll do that too before we end. So what did I just set up? Just set up the recruiting. Okay, we just set it up. So now, exactly, we just set it up. And so I got them thinking about doubling and tripling, quadrupling their income, right? Okay, because that's possible here, isn't it? Okay, so I got them, I want them thinking about that, and I want so that the transition from doing going over all the products into the uh, into the opportunities smooth as silk. There's no, it's not like oh awkward or what are we going to do now? We just because they already told me they're curious about it. So once I show them that, we're going to go right into that. With me, that's it. Piece of cake. Okay, so um, let me just first of all tell you a little bit about our company. I would always use a red felt tip pen, like, uh, my, my, I mean, let me borrow this, like this, flare red tip felt tip pen. That's, that's what I always use, okay, because I'm going to be writing all over this presentation, and you know those little six-page presentations, what do they cost, 20 cents? 
Oh, they're 15 cents. Okay, so you buy 100 or 200 of them because I'm going to be writing all over them and I'm going to give them to the client when we get done. All right. Tony and Angie, let me just tell you a bit about our company here. Uh, first of all, we're the financial service company for the 21st century. We have 100,000 representatives, 6 million clients in the U.S., Canada, and now we're international. Matter of fact, we're expanding right now. We just went into Spain. We're expanding into Japan by the end of the year here. And it looks like we're going to be into Germany right after that sometime. So if you add all those together, there's 280 million uh, people in the U.S. There's uh, probably about 60 million people in Spain. In Japan, there's over 100 million people in Japan. In Germany, uh, I don't know the number, but I'd say it's probably 50 million plus. You know, If you add all that together, there's probably between 500 to 600 million people that we have access to right now. Our market is expanding. Our company is exploding all over the, con the country and all over the world. It's just an amazing thing that's taking place right now with our company. Isn't that pretty wild what's happening there? Okay. Isn't that right, Tony? Okay. Good. So, uh, you know, I asked the question. Now, I want to point out, see, that this is big. This is a big thing. It's huge. And that it's exploding. It's expanding. There's the markets unlimited. 600 million people. I mean, come on. Because right? somebody has that thought in their mind, you know, it's probably over already. They're all the clients are taken and I can't do a business here, right? I mean, no, 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 that's not an issue here. It's huge. Not only is it huge, it's expanding, okay? And then Citigroup's our parent company. Uh, th there's a couple of things you want to point out, point out here. New York Stock Exchange, we're one of the Dow 30 Jones Industrial Average Stocks. And what that means is, you know, there's, a, there's probably, I don't know, there's several million companies doing business in the U.S. right now, okay? They, what they do is they, they select 30 companies that represent the entire economy. So to be part of those 30, would you agree is pretty prestigious? It's a very select group of people. Well, in the financial services sector, Citigroup was the company that was chosen to represent the entire United States economy. Is that amazing? It's really prestigious, okay? And then on top of that, right now we have over $900 billion in assets, which makes us number one in terms of assets in the world. We're number one in the world in terms of assets. There's not another company on the planet Earth that's bigger than Citigroup in terms of assets. And then recently, uh, Forbes magazine, which is a business magazine, they ranked the world super 50, and they ranked Citigroup number one. Of all the greatest corporations on Earth, Forbes magazine ranked Citigroup number one. It doesn't get any better than number one, does it? See that? doesn't get any better than number one, does it? Okay. So, and then you can go over the subsidiaries, blah, 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 blah. But what the bottom line is this, and then you go into the, the, the Sandy Wild, blah, blah, blah. You can go that. But the bottom line, what I want you to do here is I want you to tie in. You say, look, Sandy Wild, leadership's everything. Uh, da, da, this is Sandy's thing. But the bottom line is this. Sandy said, he made this comment right here, October 19, 1993. He said, my goal is to build the number one financial service company in America. That's what he said in 1993. There's like, no, nah, what does that work out to eight years ago, right? Not only did he do that, Tony and Angie, right? He made it the number one in the world. So not only did he accomplish that goal, but he exceeded it. He not only he exceeded it. Isn't that pretty impressive? He's one of those kinds of individuals that when he says he's going to do something, he actually does it and he exceeds it. That's the kind of person you want to, you know, trust right and do business with would you agree with that so let me ask you this question would you guys after what i've just shown you right here would you guys feel comfortable doing business with or getting involved in business with a company companies like primarican city would you have any challenge with that so you so it's a yes then you would feel comfortable sandy said he made this comment right here october 19 1993 he said my goal is to build the number one financial service company in america that's what he said in 1993. There's like, nah, what does that work out to eight years ago, right? Not only did he do that, Tony and Angie, right? He made it the number one in the world. So not only did he accomplish that goal, but he exceeded it. He not only he exceeded it. Isn't that pretty impressive? He's one of those kinds of individuals that when he says he's going to do something, he actually does it and he exceeds it. That's the kind of person you want to you know, trust, right, and do business with. Would you agree with that? So 
let me ask you this question. Would you guys, after what I've just shown you right here, would you guys feel comfortable doing business with or getting involved in business with a company, companies like Primerica and Citigroup? Would you have any challenge with that? So you, so it's a yes, then you would feel comfortable? That means they're all independent companies. Citigroup's a parent company. Each of these are, are, are independently run companies within that company. So each one of them are responsible for each, each other. Kind of like if you had ki you have kids, right? Okay, when they become adults, each kid is, is independently responsible for their own actions and obligations. Would you agree with that? Or do you want to be ob obligated to them forever? Would you? Right, well, that's how this works too. So each company is its own company, but there's a parent company umbrella over the top of all these other companies. That's all that means, okay? But each one's responsible. Each is a standalone company, is basically what it says. That's correct. That's correct. But each of them stands alone. So whatever, whatever agreements or things they enter into, they're, they're responsible for those. Okay. Of course, just like with a parent, if one of your kids came to you and had a challenge, you'd be willing to help them, right? Well, so would Citigroup. Make sense? Let me ask you a question. Would you guys feel comfortable doing business with company? I asked you that question. The answer is yes, right? Okay, great. Now I write yes there. Why do I write yes there? Because if we have an issue at the back end and they go, well, I'm not sure about your company, I go, wait, 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 wait. You told me you wouldn't have any problem. You, you told me, I remember I wrote yes here because you told me yes. But what's changed? See? Nothing's changed. Go ahead. Okay, then on the, the next page would be our mission, debt-free, right? Now, this right here, our mission is to help family debt-free. This is all you need to do. Just read these. Say, look, Tony and Angie, this is one of the reasons our business is exploding right here because of some of the challenges that Americans are having. Household, uh, this is Wall Street Journal said household borrowing has risen 60% to $6.5 trillion. Is that amazing? $6.5 trillion. And then despite an unprecedented economic boom, more than half of Americans are worried about retirement. Are you guys a little concerned about how you're going to retire and what's going to happen with that? Well, more than half of Americans are worried about that. And then families across America have accumulated $505 billion in credit card debt. The average balance is $8,000. Well, in California, it's closer to $20,000. Okay? It's really out of control, right? Because people don't have any kind of a plan. They just kind of spend without any kind of a plan, right? And then the number of, because of this, right, because of this number of total bankruptcies filed during the calendar years is 1.3 million. Can you imagine? 1.3 million families were devastated financially in the last year or so because they don't have a plan. So let me ask you this question, guys. Do you have a plan, a written program to get you out of debt and financial security? Do you guys have something in writing right now that you're following at this point? You guys have that? No? Okay. Well, you're not the Lone Ranger, okay? Now, Look, if I was able to help you formulate a plan and put together some strategies that allowed you to get debt free and, and retire financially independent, would you be uh, would you be open to uh, implementing that and, and doing something like that? Would you allow me to help you to do? Would you allow me to help you to do that? Okay, great. I got another close there, right? Another yes. Okay, and then and then I'd go over the problem. I, I'm not going to go into the detail of this, but the bottom line is the solution, right? Now, we do a, we do a, the way we're going to do this right here, help you, is through this, this financial needs analysis. It's complementary. It's confidential. Yeah, this financial needs provides a cut. It's customized, and it provides programs to help you achieve your goals and dreams. So what we'll do is about a 20-some page document. It's in color. It's gorgeous. It's a fabulous thing. And what it's going to do is going to help you in the area of your investments, the area of debt elimination, which means getting rid of your debt, income protection, managing the money that you make, and managing the money that goes out, okay, which are all important things. Would you agree with that? Okay, so on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, how would you guys rate your desire to become debt-free and financially independent? 10, okay, so 10, it doesn't get any higher than 10, so you guys are highly motivated is what you're telling me, right? So that if I could put together a plan like this, and it has two or three or four different strategies that are going to allow you to get debt-free, you're so motivated that you would definitely go ahead and implement those strategies if they made sense to you when I came back with them, right? You're not going to be one of those people that say, yeah, I want to get debt free. And then I come back with a how to do it. And you go, well, I want to think about it. You would never do that, right? You would actually implement it, right? If it makes sense. Is that a yes? 
I understand that. But after you read it, if it actually helped you do what I just said, yeah. and you read it, no, it's not going to take you today to read it. It's going to take you about 10 minutes. I'm going to show you how to do that, okay? It's going to be very, very simple. Why would you need to do that? Yeah, but if I'm not there to, to guide you through it, it's like you if you were going to read right now a manual on how to uh, put an engine together, could you do it by yourself and figure it out? Okay, you probably need somebody to kind of sh coach you through it, right? That's what this is kind of like. So I really need to be there to help you do that. Once I sit down with you and I go through it and I explain it to you and it makes sense to you, because of course I'm not going to expect you to make any kind of decision until you feel totally comfortable with it. That's really the real issue. You're afraid of making a mistake, right? So if I can make sure we can get you to the point where you know you're not going to make a mistake and it's absolutely going to do everything that I tell you it's going to do and you understand it and you feel comfortable with it, at that point, uh, can I just assume that you're going to go ahead and implement those, those plans and strategies? Okay, great. Did you see what I did right there? Okay. See, because most of you would go, okay, well, uh, I'll just bring it back and see what happens. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. I'm getting a commitment, right? So see, all the only thing, when somebody does that, and that happens, that happens right there. What is she saying? She's saying, I'm afraid of making a mistake. That's all she's saying. I'm afraid of making a mistake. Okay, so if I tell her, look, I understand that. Of course, you need to look at it. Of course, I want you to read it. Of course, I'm not going to have you do anything until you're 100% comfortable with it. But after I go through everything and you see it and it makes sense and you understand it and you're comfortable, at that point, can I get your commitment that you're going to go ahead and implement it? Okay, great. See, otherwise, there's no point in me coming back. Then they're going to have me come back once and twice. Those of you that have had to go back two and three and four times, it's your own damn fault you have to go back that many times. It's because you don't do what I just did right there. That's why you're going back to, and that's why your closing ratio is not very good. See, I close everybody or I'm not coming back. I'm not going to go back on a second appointment unless I know I'm doing business. What's the point? I'm going to go, if I don't know for sure I'm doing business, I'll go on another appointment that I can go create that I know I can do that one. Why would I go back on one that I may or may not? That's stupid, right? Because they, because you know what I'll get back to? I'll say, look, you told me you're highly motivated to get debt free. 10 doesn't get any higher than 10. So if I come back with a plan and then you say, I want to think about it, what does this say about your answer right here? That it's, that you, you're, that you, it's not truthful, right? Either you're motivated or you're not. Which one is it, right? Okay. Is this helping? Okay. All right, so the next the area that we help, I'm going to cover now, you guys, I'm going to cover three strategies, uh, three different strategies. I'm going to cover three different strategies that we help people with, all right? These are three areas, that, three major areas that we help people in, okay? And then I'm going to ask you, as I cover each strategy, I'm going to ask you three questions that are going to be written. I'm going to ask the same thing three different times. And you're going to go, oh, you just asked me that. You need to humor me, okay? Just, just, there's a method to my madness, all right? Would you do that for me? Okay, and it really helps Harriet right here, okay? All right? Because I'm going to ask her the three, those three questions that, that you either have or haven't heard. And I'm going to set it up so that she doesn't think I'm a goof, right? Okay? So I'm going to say, okay, this right here is, is, is we, our, our, our strategy to help people get debt free and financially independent. Okay, Tony and Angie. Now look, it's it's the name of our program is called SMART, and that stands stands for uh, Save Marriages and Reduce Tension. No, that's not really what it stands for. Usually you say that and they'll laugh, right? Okay, but you ought to do that. That's what I would do every time. This stands for Save Marriages and Reduce Tension. All right, people will laugh, and you you'll break the ice a little bit, right? You say, no, not really. That's not, it means save money and reduce taxes. But, but it does that too, if you can get out of, you know what I'm talking about, right? So this client right here, they had a first mortgage of 96,000. They're paying 820, they had 25 years. They also had personal debt, credit cards, car payments, uh, you know, stuff like that of 20,000. They're paying 750. Their total monthly outlay is $1,570 a month for their home and all their debt. Probably not far from what you guys are doing right now, I'd imagine, right? That sound familiar? Okay. Okay, so 
what we did for these folks, okay, is is we refinanced that. We did a loan, a new loan from a first of 120,000, okay? What that did, Tony and Angie, is it reduced their payment from 1500 down to 935 a month. Okay? That saved them $635 a month right there. Well, that's that's actually works out to approximately $7,000 a year. Is that incredible? I, mean, I want you guys to think now, Tony, if you went to work tomorrow, right, and, and your boss called you aside and say, hey, Tony, I, I come here. I want to talk to you. You're doing such a great job. I'm going to give you a $7,000 a year raise. How, would you be excited at all? How, how long would it take for you to call Angie and tell her about it? Like immediately. Yeah, she would go spin it. No, we're going to fix that, okay? Okay. But you would be excited, right? Well, that's in effect what we just did for this client right here. Is that fabulous or what? You think they're excited about me about right now, about us, right? Now, you see what I'm saying? I, it, that's exactly what we did. Do you think they're excited about us right now, right? Yes, okay. I want them to start thinking what we do is fantastic, see? The key to recruiting somebody and getting them going is you got to get them to believe what we're doing is fantastic. It's incredible. It is. You got to get them to believe that, okay? But see, you could go get a loan, with B of A, Countrywide, Ditech Funding, there's a, you know, hundreds of companies out there that do loans. Maybe, maybe, okay. But the bottom line is, the thing that makes us different, the reason I'm so proud of our company, proud to be involved with it and proud of working with it, is we're different. You know, I talked to you guys about getting debt-free and financially independent, right? If you were to do this, you talked about this, about taking that money and spending it. But see, that's not going to help you get debt-free and financially independent, is it? Okay, my commitment to you is to help you do that. So what we're going to do, as opposed to just spending that, right, and going buying a big screen TV or a new SUV or something, we're going to take part of that 635, 437, and invest at 10% for 15 years. In 15 years, if you do that, you're going to end up with $181,000 in cash. Okay? Also, we're going to take the remaining 198 and apply that toward the principal. So instead of making a 935 payment, we're going to make 935 plus 198, which is like 1100 and some dollars. We're going to make a payment like that. What that's going to do is it's going to pay the house off and all the debt in 15 years. So now this client right here has a house paid for and $181,000 in cash 15 years down the road. How do you think they're feeling about me or our company right about now? Yeah, loving it, right? If I, was, if I were able to do something like this for you, something that resembled this, where we lowered your payments, got you out of debt sooner, got all your house paid off and everything paid off a lot sooner than you normally would, and it made sense to you, would you, would you do this? Would you go ahead and implement this strategy if we, if we could do something like this for you? Huh? As long as you felt comfortable with it and it made sense to you? Yes? Okay. Another yes. You see? Now we got the smart loan. She already said they said yes to the smart loan. Of course, we got to go through the details, but we got the trial close, the preliminary close is done already, which is important, right? One of the reasons you're not doing a lot of smart loans is nobody's doing this. When they're on, their, when they're on the presentation, they don't do this. You got to close them on it up front, right? But see, it's even better than that, what we did for this client, you guys. We took that 181, right? And plus now they have $1,500 left over. If they were to continue to invest that at 10% for till age 67, that they would end up with $1,820,000 in their retirement account. One million. Now that's just a bunch of numbers, right? Let me tell you, what does that really mean, okay? That 1.8 million invested at 10% equals, uh, it's $182,000 a year in income or 15,000 dollars a month that's what that actually is fifteen thousand dollars a month now how's their how different is a retirement going to be if they have fifteen thousand dollars a month coming in off of that one million eight hundred thousand they've accumulated there ah pretty awesome right pretty fantastic and then if you add it up maybe they got social security and they have a 401k or something they might got another you know three thousand dollars in income there that's eighteen thousand dollars a month right there you see that? That's pretty impressive, right? So, uh, if and then you ask the questions. If this is the questions, if you were, if if we were to uh, sit down 
with 10 different people and showed them a scenario like this, out of 10 people, how many would go ahead if, they were, if their situation was similar to that, do you think? All 10 would, right? And if you were to sit down with your brother, your sister, or a good friend, and you were to do something like this for them, how do you think they'd feel about you guys doing this for them? Would they like you? They'd be mad at you because you called them and bothered them? Huh? No. They'd be jacked, right? They'd be just really excited about that. Okay? Right? And how would you feel about yourself if you were to do this for somebody? Great, right? Okay, so why are we asking those questions? To recruit, but there's, no, this is the reason, okay? The reason is, is to eliminate fear, fear of failure and fear of rejection. That's the reason. Because the reason people don't do our business because they're afraid of being rejected and they're afraid of failing. That's why you can't get anybody to do this thing. If they knew that if they went and saw 10 people, 10 out of 10 would buy, could they fail? No, right? And if, and if I ask them, how's your family or your friends going to think about you to do this for you, how would they feel about you? And they say, great, fantastic. Are they going to be worried about being rejected by their family and friends? No. You see what I'm saying? That's the reason you ask those questions three times, and probably none of you do it, but you should. Because the number one reason why you don't recruit people is because those people you're talking to are afraid of failing and they're afraid of being rejected. And you don't overcome that. And that's why you don't recruit them. Okay? We're almost done here. Okay, this is uh, another area that we help people in. It's in, terms, it's in the area of insurance. This client right here, uh, we believe in a concept called buy term and invest difference. When we sat down with John and Mary, John had, uh, before Primerica, okay, right here, he had $150,000 policy, $150,000 at $110 a month. After we did an FNA for John, right, we did an FNA, that was that funny, we found out that actually John needed $300, Mary needed $150, and we put five on the kids, $455 for $71 a month. Now that is three times more coverage for $39 less a month. Is that a big difference or a little difference? It's a little, three times more. Yeah, but the amount of protection, look at that. 455 versus 150, 110 versus 71. It's a lot more for a lot less, right? Or for less, right? So think about this. If, if this was your situation, if we looked at what you're currently doing right now in the terms of protection right now, and we found out that you know you were in a similar situation, you're paying too much for too little, and we are able with our Primerica solution giving you a lot more for, le for less or even a lot more for the same amount. Is there any reason you wouldn't make a change from your current company to our Primerica, uh, Primerica Life product? Would you, do, would you make a change? If it made sense and it was more for less and, and a better, I could show you in black and white that it was better in every way. Okay. Yes. So we got close a life sale, right? Done. All we got to all we got to do is, is is look at it, right? They were either, she already told me if ours is better and it makes more sense, they're going to do it. Those of you who aren't closing life sales, it's because you're not doing that. Just ask them. That's all you got to do, and then write yes, okay? So then, um, I, I want you to think about something real quick. One of the things that's awesome about our company, if you notice. Real quick, I want to just go back here. What we did here is we saved them six thirty-five dollars, right? So we saved them money. They were paying fifteen. Now they're nine thirty-five, right? And they had more cash and all that. Here they were spending uh, one ten, and we, get, we did it for seventy-one. How many companies do you guys know of that go in, market new products, ask for less money, and give more? Yeah. Isn't that fantastic? Because a lot of people think, you know, oh, I'm not much of a salesperson. I don't know if I could do this. But if you're going in and you're giving them more of something for less money, do you think you have to be much of a salesperson to do that? Yeah, right? It's just really showing it to them and explaining it, right? So what am I overcoming there? I'm not a salesperson. I can't sell. I'm not much of a salesperson, right? But if I show them we're giving them more for less, Right, and you don't have to be much of a salesperson to do that, right? Then that objection doesn't fly anymore, right? 
Yeah, you just deal with it. Get it over with. See, if you deal with every objection in the body of the presentation, you won't have any at the end, and you just go ahead. Okay? How money works. I'm not going to go through Rule 72, but this is the part I want you to go through. Now, look, this Rule of 72, you guys, will we'll make it make sense. We'll put it in dollars and cents. If you were to put away $200 a month for 35 years, that would be $70,000 out of pocket you'd invest, right? $200 a month for 35 years, okay? Well, actually, it's more than that, but it's 240 times 35. I don't know what. It's over 70000 Okay, so at 70000 all right, 3% interest, it would be uh, $148,000. So it's, it's, it's two times more than what you originally started with, right? What you invested. Not bad, okay? At 6%, it's 286000 So it's four times more, right? See that? Okay, so four times more. Not bad. What do you guys think it would be at 12%? Six times more? Okay, let's take a look. This is what it would be. At 12%, it's 1.2 million. It's 17 times more. It's 17 times more, huh? So if, if we looked at your at your investment and savings program, whatever you guys are doing, we found that you were in the 3 to 6% rate of return area. And I could show you a way that you could move your money into some investment vehicles that have the potential to do 12% or even more. Would you guys have any reservation in moving your money from where you currently have it to something that, that has the potential to be much more uh, effective and profitable for you guys? I don't know. If we move the money, you're not going to have to pay taxes. We'll move it into, if you're, if you're in another qualified account, we'll move it into another qualified. There would no, be no tax implications. Assuming there's no tax implications, would you be willing to make the move? Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. You got the investment handled. Now, if they say this comes up, where am I going to get 12%? Right? This happens every now and then. What you then say is that look, the SP 500 stock index over the last 20 years has averaged 17.8%. If you would have had it there instead of here, you'd have closer to $3 million instead of, instead of the $1.2 million. So, in fact, over the last 20 years, the rate of return of average rate of return of what we had our clients in is actually a lot better than 12%. There's no guarantee that's going to happen in the future, but historically that's what's happened right now in the past. Okay, and I'll sit down with you and I'll show you all the different options and their track records and all that. I mean, before we make a move and we'll, we'll make sure that we do the exactly uh, the right thing to help you for your particular, you know, investment kind of personality that you have, okay? All right? Done. Okay? And then the last but not least is the recruiting, right? Can you see how you could start closing more business if you just did that? Huh? If you don't close off of that, you're just, I don't know what to do for you. You might as well quit, okay? Okay, now look. Remember you guys mentioned you're, you're interested in earning more income, right? And growing your income? Okay, let me just, show, I want to share a couple of concepts. One of the things I found is most people never really think about how they earn income. There's four uh, legal ways to earn income. Uh, employee is one. The person has a job based on the position, not the person. And that's what you're at right now. You're an employee, right? Um, one of the challenges with being an employee is that if you're an employee, your employer determines the home you live in, the cars you drive, the vacations you take, the schools your kids go to, right? Your, your employer is determining all those things right now, right? Because would, would you rather live in a, in, a, in, a, in a bigger house than you live in or in a different area than you live in right now? I'm, I'm, I'm just, it's a guess on my part. Are you totally, would you, is there any cars you would rather drive than the ones you're driving right now? Are there any vacations you'd rather take than the ones you're currently taking? Yeah? Okay. And your kids, would you like to send them to private school or is public school okay with you guys? Public school in a better area, so that would be a more expensive home then, right? Okay. But your job doesn't allow you to do that, right? Okay, so that's one of the drawbacks with having a job. With me? Okay. Now look, if you're self-employed, and this person owns a job, it could be a doctor, a dentist, lawyer. This could be a little better because if you're, you know, if you're really good at what you do and you're self-employed, you can make a lot more money, right? You could, you could, to a certain extent, you could really determine how much you make, okay? But the challenge with being self-employed is if you don't work, you don't make any money, right? And if you're really good at what you do, you work so much, everybody wants your time and attention, you can't have a life. You with me? 
okay? And then business owners is the third way. As a business owner, one of the things about being a business owner, that the, to me the most attractive thing about being a business owner is that you can be um, absent and still make money. In other words, see, that's the most attractive part of being a business owner is that you could be gone and still make money. Okay. You like that? Okay. For example, like if, uh, you know, like in my situation, because I have a large sales force, if I'm gone for a week or a month, it doesn't, like last month, I didn't write one sale, see one client, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I made $321,000 last month. Okay. And I didn't see a single client. No, not really, okay, you know, if I can help it, okay? I saw a lot of them early in my career, though. my first seven years, I saw, you know, tons, okay? But now, because I own a business, I've got a lot of RVPs, and, and I, it doesn't, I don't physically have to see clients anymore. I make a lot of money even when I'm not there. So if I want, you know, I played in four golf tournaments last month, okay? And I made 320000 What's that? Did I actually wrote a sale? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> it's a, I mean, I mean, literally, probably ten years ago. Okay. Um, but I've been I've been out of the field since 1990, 1991 or two is when I got out of the field. Okay, that's when I ha I haven't since ninety one or two I, I haven't seen clients. Okay, but that first that first from nineteen eighty four to nineteen ninety one or two, I wrote about you know. 10 to 20 life sales a month, and I recruited about 10 people a month every month for about six or seven years in a row is what I did, okay? And I built, that's what created all the RVPs, which created my freedom you with me. That's how I got free. And then from that point on, I didn't, you know, I didn't have to anymore. That's what I'm, that's what this is about. So if you recruit people and you develop people, you can get yourself to that place, you know, three or four, five or six years down the road. That's the dream, right? Okay? So that's the key. That's how you know if people own a business or not. If if they if they physically have to be there to make to make money, then they don't own a business. They're either, they're either self-employed or an employee. If they don't have to be, then they still make money. Then they then they're a business owner, right? Make sense? Okay. And then an investor, let's say they have two million dollars in cash and they got a ten percent return. They get two hundred thousand dollars a year income, whether they get out or bet or not. That's an investor. Somebody that has a bunch of money that's putting off cash flow and they they make money even if they don't. They stay home every day for the month. Okay, of the of these of these four ways to make money, which appeal to you guys the most? Investor, that's the most. Okay, what's the second most? Business. Okay, so those two, right? But you're an employee right now, so if I could show you how to go from here to here to here to here in the shortest possible time, right? Is there any reason why you guys wouldn't join me in the business and get started and give it a shot? I'm right here. I do as much as I want to. Sometimes I like to be out. You like being around your kids 24 hours a day? Huh? Uh, me either. Okay. Sometimes you like to talk to adults, right? Yeah. Okay. So everybody has to do something, right, to, for fun, right? To me, this is for fun. Maybe I could help you. Maybe you see something you like and you want to do it, and then you could have some, you know, how I could help you do well. And it's fun to see people go from where they are to, to doing well. Make sense? Okay. All right, cool. All right. And then the compensation. Now, the compensation is, this is the important part of compensation. The important part of compensation is this, okay? is that you've got to go back and you've got to get people to see. People have problems making money on their friends and relatives and all that. They have a big, they don't ever say it to you, okay? But in their mind, they do have a challenge of making money selling stuff, okay? Some of you do still even. So what you do, you have to, you have to show them how it makes sense and why they should be feeling comfortable about it. How you do that is this, you say, look, on that loan, remember we helped that client and we, we, we gave them, there's the loan paper, right? They end, if they follow this strategy, they end up with 
181,015 years or $1.8 million in, in, in that period of time, right? And then on the, on the insurance part of it, right, they have 455 uh, versus 150. Instead of 110, they're paying 71. And on the investment, instead of having 286, they have 1.2 million, right? In every way, shape, or form, the client's tons better off, right, than they were before they, I sat down with them, right? Okay. So if I helped them to that extent, if I helped them on the loan, do you think they would mind if, if, if we were paid $655? See, if you're a part-time district leader and you put a million eight in the retirement account and they pay you six fifty five, who's a real winner in that, that scenario? They are, right? On the insurance, if you give them, you know, uh, three times more coverage and save them $39 a month, that's just the first year, $39 a month. That's almost $400 a year over 20 years. $400 a year would be $8,000 you save them just in life insurance premiums, right? If you got paid three thirty three thirty five, who's the real winner there? Yeah, on the investment, if they end up with a million two instead of uh, two hundred eighty six thousand, who's the real winner in that scenario? Yeah, right. In every every area, the client really is the winner, right? So they're not going to be bothered too much if you get paid a thousand dollars, right? So it usually takes about five hours to complete that whole program, right? All parts of it. So if, if it took if you invested five hours and you earned a thousand dollars. How much does that work out to be an hour about $200 an hour, right? Do you make $200 an hour right now? If I could show you guys how in the next six to eight to 12 months, how you can get yourself in a position where you can make as much as $200 an hour on a part-time basis, is there any reason that you wouldn't get started? You see? Another yes. Yes. And then the RVP compensation, it's $1,800, $640. If you're an RVP, it's $2,500. What would you rather be, an RVP or a district leader? Okay, you'd rather be an RVP. So if I can show you in the next 18 to 24 to 36 months how you can go from where you are to this place where you could make as much as $500 an hour and be an RVP, you're in, right? You're in, right? You're in, right? Okay, that's what you say. You're in, right? There's no more like, well, I want to think about it. Let me tell you. No, no, no. You're in. You're in, right? Okay, let's go. Get started. Okay. Off to the races. And then the most important part of our whole thing is the override thing. Over The override is the most important part of the whole scenario because look at this. The override, this part right here is going to allow you to do this. Be a business owner. Okay. Because you, so, you told me you really like being absent and still making money, right? Let me show you how you can be absent and still make money. Let's say that you got me involved. You're an RVP. You teach me how to do the business. You train me. You spend a lot of time with me. I go see this client now, and I do all these sales, right? I do a life, a, a loan, and an investment, and I make I make a thousand bucks on the loan because you taught me what to do. You're going to make eleven hundred and sixty dollars and an override. On the insurance, you're going to make three hundred five. On the investment, that you're going to make fifteen hundred dollars. That's what you would make. I do all the work. I find the client. I go do the business. I go see the client. You don't ever know who the client is. You're watching Survivor. I go do this, okay? I make I make a thousand. You make fifteen hundred. You like that? Pretty cool, huh? Huh? That's right. It's more than me. That's exactly right. But I couldn't have done that without your help. You taught me how to do that, okay? Some people have a problem with this override structure, but I just want to show you something. You have a job right now. What are you making a year approximately right now, Tony? 60,000, okay? So if, you're, if your boss is paying you $60,000 a year, okay, how much do they need to be making in order to pay, afford to pay you 60,000 on your efforts, you think? A lot more. Double at least probably, right? More? Okay. So if they pay you 60, let's say that they're making $120,000 based on what, you, what you're doing for them, right? If you subtract that from that, that equals 60,000. That $60,000 difference in what they make on your efforts and what they pay you is their override. Right? That's what it is. So if you're an employee, if your employer pays you sixty grand and they make one twenty, dollars the difference in what they pay you and what they make is their override. Everybody that's an employee is, getting, is being overridden right now. I don't, even if you're making eighty grand, you are making eighty grand. they got to be making... 200 to pay you 80. Huh? Right? Okay. So the difference between what they pay you and what, the, and, what, and, what, and what they make is their override. So right now, you're being overridden. 
would you rather override somebody or would you rather be overridden? Ah, okay. So this is how you do it right here. This is how you do it. And now look, if you had 10 of me on a part-time basis that did one loan, one insurance, one investment, 10 times 1,500 is how much? 15. It's 15,000, right? Yeah, 10 times 1,500 is 15,000 a month. A month. Okay. 15000 is $180,000 a year in override. So when I show this to people normally, you know what they usually think? There's no way. How could you make that much money? That's too much money. Sounds too good to be true, right? Isn't that what you're thinking right now? That's what everybody thinks. The reason you guys think of that is because you're thinking in terms of hourly wage or salaries. That's why you think that. Because if you think in terms of hourly wage, $30 an hour is a pretty good hourly wage, right? A salary, $60,000, $70,000, $80,000 a year salary is a pretty good salary, right? So as long as you're thinking in terms of salary, you're going to think that's not realistic. But when you start thinking in terms of owning a business and overriding the efforts of many, many people, you can start seeing how if you had 10 people, right, it's, it's, it's $15,000. What if you had 20? $30,000, right? What if you had... What if you had 100? So what's going to stop you from finding 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 people that would, you could teach how to do this on a part-time basis? What would stop you from doing that? Just you, right? So then you're the only thing standing in the way of doing, doing this or keeping your 60 grand a year job. You're, you're, the, you're the challenge or you're the not the challenge. Does that make sense? You ready to get going? Okay, the first thing we need to do is get your IBA filled out. This is what we got to do. You get your top 25 list. This is not optional. And then we need to teach you how to set up appointments, and we're off to the races. And that's it. Thank you very much. Okay? Hey, that's it. Go Jeremiah.